why do I only make modded spore creations? This is a question I very understandably get asked a lot. I also get a lot of requests to make things without cheats, without freedom, without mods, and so on and so forth. And I've always stated that I'd rather not. I have an entire collection of vanilla creations all on my Swapedia. I've got hundreds and hundreds of creations that you can all access from here. And I've said in the past that the reason why I prefer using mods is very simply because I feel like mods have a greater potential, they have a greater ceiling, and I personally feel very restricted within the vanilla editors. But I've never really expanded on my answer furthermore than that, so I figured I'd give you guys a little bit more insight. So, like I said, a lot of it is to do with potential, but I also just feel that the vanilla editors are very... We all know about the complexity. I also thought that they're very cramped in terms of actual space and boundaries. And also that you get to a point where all the creations kind of look the same in my opinion. It's not necessarily that the modded versions have, you know, greater complexity, or that's a big part of it, or that they may introduce more parts, but they also allow for a more for a greater variety of said parts. They allow for greater sizes, or make it be you can make things a lot smaller. You can stack things to create more unique patterns. Your creations can be significantly larger, significantly more grandiose, and that in turn changes the entirety of their anatomy. What we're currently looking at here is what is, in my opinion, one of my better vanilla creations. This has been made with absolutely zero mods, it was made a long time ago. And while, in terms of anatomy, it is quite a bit larger than the typical creation I normally make, that is due to its hunched overness. But what you actually notice is that the creation is very bland. What's unique about it is, quite simply, the posture and the heads. And that is, to be honest, quite it. It's got no other redeeming factors about it. Sure, the skin looks pretty, but guess what? The skin is actually because of a HD texture fix that I have, not because of Vanilla Spore. Another example I'd like to give is actually one of my Godzilla creations. If we go ahead and check out this one here. This here is a pretty serious attempt of making Godzilla without using any mods whatsoever. And again, as you can see, like it's an okay creation, but it's a little bit strange isn't it like once again it feels very cramped and as a so the posture feels a little bit strange the way the arms are positioned the hands are a bit large the tail is actually quite fine but the spikes you'll notice are actually using civilian outfit parts because you do not have the complexity to do this within the creature editor now that is fine except now it means that you cannot actually view this creature in the creature stage it will only populate in the tribal stage or above so now there's none of it from actually being seen within the game or at least within the parts of the game you'd want to see it in you also notice that the face looks kind of strange the general construction the snout is too narrow the eyes don't actually exist they're not even eyes the hands and feet are the wrong coloration so now if we were to compare this to a modded Godzilla creation the big difference that you'll notice is not necessarily the parts use, but the general form of the creation. The hands and feet are now the correct colour scheme. The nose is significantly better shaped than with a beak. The tail is much more grandiose, it's a lot longer and better reflects the legendary version of Godzilla. There is, of course, the spikes are indeed modded. Now, that is something that you definitely can make the arguments that, well, that's a modded part, that's easy, you can't get over the sport, and you're absolutely correct. But when I make creations as a profession, and I know that sounds very, very strange, but that is the truth of the matter. When I make uh, fan art creations for you guys, I do get some very reasonable criticism that sometimes the creation should look exactly like the source material. My old Sonic creation here is a pretty strong example. Now, there's two factors among this. One is that the bright colours you cannot get in Vanilla Spore. Now, there are some people who do some really incredible attempts, which I'll show you shortly when it comes to colorizing creations, but the fact is that typically in Vanilla Spore, you cannot get bold, strong colors like this. Now, despite it being modded, what you will also notice that the arms are still the wrong color. I've gotten a lot of criticism and a fair amount of flack and insults for this in the fact that Sonic's arms are indeed tan, and I'm well aware of this. But at the end of the day, when we're playing with Spore, which is a very limiting piece of software, 
you really can't get things to be utterly perfect. Even with mods, you cannot make the creations perfect, since in this scenario, there is no way I can colour the arms without colouring the feet, while retaining the white gloves, which would actually, you know, animate as posable hands. There's a lot of different factors to put in here. What I could have easily done is covered the arms in the tanned no down parts you see in the face and the chest, but then that creates like a really ugly texture and it will animate really poorly. The same thing here for Supersonic as well. Once again, the arms are the wrong coloration. And if I can't do that with it modded spore, you bet your ass I can't do it in vanilla spore. So like I mentioned earlier, there are people out there who do some legitimately incredible things within vanilla spore, much better than what I can do. And one such example is Pokemon. I don't know what it is, but a lot of the times Pokemon creations of spore are really quite astounding. My personal favourite is Kyogre. But if I take a closer look here, as I dissect things, you'll notice a couple of a bit off-putting flaws, especially when in the YouTube audience, people are very... have a very close eye for detail and accuracy. Take this one for example. Very, very subtly, you can notice that the white bumps are quite pronounced, the markings around the hands are, again, very overlapping, and the tip of the mouth is, again, quite pronounced. Now, these are really miniature nitpicks, but this is what I experience a lot of, and therefore I need to apply that same criticism to these creations as well. Like I said, they're amazing creations by vanilla standards. They are incredibly fantastic. But we're going through the same nitpicking eye of accuracy here, thus I must criticize. Here's another version of Kyogre. Now, the markings here are quite a bit cleaner. Like I mentioned before, the coloration is really impressive, but now the mouth isn't quite right, the top of the mouth isn't blue as it should be, it's beige. And I don't believe I see the entire underbelly being white as it should be. Another really impressive creation here. In fact, this is probably one of the better ones when you look at accuracy, but now you can see it's actually the wrong coloration. If it was primal, make a bit more sense, but in terms of a typical Kyogre, not quite right. It's also missing some of the stripes going around the side of the creation. Another version here, which appears to be a more up-to-date version by Lucario Guy, it does indeed have the markings, but they do unfortunately just look a little bit sloppy. And again, that is no criticism to him whatsoever. It is amazing as a vanilla creation, but if you check out the tip of the fins here around the mouth, it's got like a very dotted texture. I understand what part he's used, and I think it's extremely clever, but it just doesn't look very polished. It doesn't look very smooth or really reflects that of Kyogre or any other Pokemon creation. Another fantastic recreation that's taken a similar pro approach as Lucario Guy had done when it came to the fins and the mouth. And once again, it just looks kind of mottled and kind of strange. Additionally, the markings on the hands or the fins aren't quite right. So you see my point here, they're all really, really amazing creations. Now if we compare it to my old modded one, mods do unfortunately have like a very distinct upper hand and as you'll see here the markings are a lot more complete it generally looks a lot more polished a lot more neat and that is not to say because mods are any better but because mods enable a much higher potential due to the increased complexity i can add in a lot more parts to make things much neater and much straighter but also due to the increased boundary size i can make the fins or flippers whatever you want to call them significantly larger and as an added bonus, this actually animates and swims, whereas I can guarantee that the other ones probably don't. They probably flop around on the ground. Which, again, i got to emphasize, is not any fault of the creators. They did incredible jobs. It is just the, the fundamental differences between modded and vanilla. Now, before you think that it's all about the parts and the accuracy, or what about your own creations? Well, my own vanilla creations, I just don't really feel that great about. A lot of the time it comes down to the way that the parts colour and how squashed they feel within the boundary. Let's take a look at this creation here, for example, which was based on a much older creation here. What you'll notice with both of them is that they're very, they look very large, but it's only because they're hunched over. And on top of being hunched over, their arms and legs are very exaggerated in terms of their form and posture. And that's because I was very limited in regards to how far I could stretch them out. As well as the vertical axis in the editors of the creature creator, the horizontal, whether it's X and Y or whatever, those are also very, very minute, especially the um, 
if you're looking at horizontally from symmetrical to left and right, that in particular is very, very thin in terms of a boundary. And it really doesn't allow you to have like very interesting arm postures. Creations like this one here are also very tricky because I cannot scale parts of sport small enough and it kind of loses all the subtlety of what is clearly meant to be some kind of graceful majestic creation. This is based on a creation made by Winnie the Wizard, which again, absolutely no insult to them whatsoever, but because sport just has such large clunky parts, it really does remove all majesty and grace from the desired concept. It just looks very lumpy, whether it's their original one or my recreation. Now I have made a fair number of dragons as well and you'll also find that a lot of my dragons tend to have the very similar postures. They're always quadrupeds, of course, but they're always kind of scrunched downwards. And that is, once again, due to the confinements of the boundary size. You'll notice that I'm emphasizing a lot more towards boundaries than I am to complexity. Now, complexity, as a massive ultra pain in the butt as it is and as stifling as I personally find it, there are ways around it. This is why a lot of people tend to make these asymmetrical posed creations like this because where asymmetry kind of halves the complexity of every part that you put on, it allows you to add so many more, but at the cost of actually having a functional creation. I'd, I can absolutely guarantee this Jowie animates like crap. This here is actually one of my favourite vanilla creations I've ever made, and on the .png file here, the preview, it looks fantastic, it looks majestic, it looks large and glorious, but then once I load it in game, you'll notice it's actually really not that majestic up close. And that is a big issue with a lot of the really stunning looking PNG creations. It's a very popular theme of Vanilla Spore to make an entirely asymmetrical posed dragon or any other creation that only looks good in the preview, but is honestly quite terrible in game and that is again no fault of the creators themselves it's just another limitation of sport and that is how these creators try to get past that limitation to make a pretty image but a non-functioning creation such as this one here it still looks very pretty but what you'll notice is that the face is completely broken when it animates it is just terrible it only has one eye because I simply couldn't fit it in. The sail parts here, the fins, they just look terrible in terms of texture. They don't match at all. They're very sloppily placed. They overlap. It just looks really weird. And in fact, the feathers are made using the travel stage feather part. So you can't even experience this in the creature stage. Not that you'd want to because it wouldn't animate very well in the first place. So this here is one of my favourite creations by another player called Odonost. And let me tell you, she is incredibly talented and her .png preview creations are by far some of the best I've ever seen. I find her a massive inspiration and I could not recommend her enough. But then when I look at her creations in game, they really lose a lot of their majesty. Now that isn't necessarily a bad thing, that's her style and she by all means should embrace it. But then when I make these creations in a video where you see the entire process which is fine but then you see the final preview, the final animation, the final close up and everything, it really loses a lot of the magic. So that really rules out these preview creations as an avenue for me. Now this fox creation here is a pretty infamous example. As you can see, Spore, Fox, no mods. And the thumbnail looks epic, it looks really, really cool. But then, as soon as you see it in game, let me tell you, I've gotten a very fair amount of um, very shocked comments. And this is my point, this is, like, this is entirely my point. The, pre the PNG, the preview look amazing, but then we see it in game, it is just an absolute laughing stock and there's no way I can make that look good I mean, <laughs> it's unironically dabbing as it walks like that is the truth of vanilla creations <laughs> so then we've tackled some of the main themes of vanilla creations and that is one recreations where you just cannot make them as accurate that's another the .png preview creations where as beautiful as they are on the cover they're terrible in they're terrible in game so like I mentioned earlier well what about my own creations what about my own imagination as mentioned, I find that they're very, very squashed. This Reborn Antarctic Dragon here is like another one that I really like, but what you'll notice is that it's very hunched over. It's very hunched over because 
again, things are just very thick, very clunky. You don't really have much flexibility in terms of moving things around. But also the tail is just cartoonishly small and makes it look like that the creation is going to fall over on itself. And there's nothing I can do about that because the creation is as long as the boundary allows. I can't bend it because otherwise it will lose the rigid, stiff form that I wanted it to have. And as a result, it just looks very strange. It's a very cool looking creation, but it just looks off. This creation here is another example. Now, if we look at the original version, it just looks stupid, as you can see. So I tried to remake it in such a way that it's a lot more believable. But since I mentioned just a moment ago that I had to straighten out and therefore shorten the tail of that Antarctic dragon, you can see here that I tried to bend the tail to give it a bit of extra length and it just looks really dopey and pathetic. Not to mention, once again, it's got the same issue of it being hunched over because it was just too big for the editor. It was too big, too clunky, but I couldn't make the part smaller because the game literally would not allow me to. Now, I will admit, there are times where I can get like a good looking creation. This here is one of them. But once again though, it's good on the cover, but when you examine it in game, you'll notice around the face that the face is just covered in moustaches, which is bizarre. That is just really, really strange. And that is unfortunate because once again, I did not have enough complexity to finish it in the creature editor, so I had to finish it in a tribal editor. That means you will never encounter this in the creature stage. Not only that, but it was also very heavily made of DLC, which is a thing that for some reason, a lot of people have a stigma against, so I don't really understand why. So without that DLC, the creation ended up looking very, very basic and very samey. Now what we could do is that instead of focusing on these really big, grandiose, epic creations, I can then focus on something a little bit more simple. Let's say this entirely made up creation. It's not based on anything, it was purely just imagination. And as a sport creature, it looks really cool. It's like, it's nice, it's unique, it's colourful, it's bright. The colours flow. It's got a fair amount of detail, just the, the asymmetry loophole. And otherwise it looks cool. But then as a video, it just looks really sad. Like, I don't know what it is about it. Perhaps I'm biased, but when it comes to a video, something about it just feels very lacking. It feels a bit too simple, if you get what I'm saying. So here's another fun example, is I have two skeletal dragon creations here. As I've mentioned in the past, I really and truly love making skeletal creations, and there's a reason why I have two of these. That's because this one here looks very scrawny, it looks very small and petite for a dragon. It's got all the cool features, although a very basic tail, but otherwise it's got all the main things going on, but overall just looks, again, kind of squashed. So I tried making a much larger one. Now this one's much more satisfying to look at, it's got a much grand more grandiose pose, it's got far more detail, and the tail is, again, kind of silly looking, but it's got more going on with it, it just, looks very, it just overall looks more polished. But what you'll notice is it distinctly lacks wings. That is simply due to complexity. It didn't matter if I used like in-game wings or if I used kind of like limbs like I did for this dragon here. In the end, I just couldn't put the complexity in. So it was a major case of either do I want this extra detail to polish it off or do I want the wings? And let me tell you guys, every time I make a dragon without wings, there's always one smart ass whining at me telling me, I know it's not a dragon. And I have to tell them I didn't have the complexity for it. In fact, this here is a famous example. One of my very first skeletal creations and one of my earlier videos. And <laughs> again, it just looks really generic. It's quite tall, sure. But it just looks, again, it just looks off. But it's okay, it's okay for a creation, let's just put it that way but it lacks the wings. And if you go scrolling through the comments, you will see, in fact, right here, I've actually had to add a disclaimer at one point to say, there are no wings. I, I can't add wings. There's so many people complaining about the lack of wings, but vanilla spore, complexity. So if you compare the three vanilla crates I've just shown you, and you compare it to this one here, Complexity is obviously a thing. In fact, this one's so complex that it couldn't animate. It was purposely made past, you know, the actual confinements of sport. But it's not just about the complexity. It's also about the size. It's about the height, how much larger, taller, longer, everything is about this. It makes it look far more grandiose. I can fit more parts into it. Things are more proportional. They don't look very chunky or clunky anymore. It looks just better overall. One additional point that I have been sorely lacking as well is that when it comes to vanilla spore, it's also textures. You cannot colour things properly. 
Well, let's check out this fun example here of an adult cinder I made back in 2010. Now, first thing, no wings! <laughs> <laughs> she has no wings. What a horrible big issue. But ignoring the fact that she has no wings, which is kind of weird for a recreation of an existing concept and a very popular character at that, one that's very iconic. The hands and feet are the wrong colour. I don't believe there's enough spikes on the tip of the tail which are also the wrong colour. The horns are too short or too small. The head is too large. The neck isn't long enough. The red palette going down her chest is not only the wrong colour but also the wrong shape and the wrong texture. She doesn't have eyes, she just has these blank soulless acorns for eyes instead. And again, no wings. Not only that, but because I tried to add in the jewellery, I used robot parts, which then actually made it completely obsolete to the majority of the sport community. So many people cannot view this. You can see people are complaining about it in the comments, and rightfully so. You can see all the comments asking for the lack of bot parts, and yeah, like it's all I could use in order to make the jewellery. I could have made it in the tribal stage editor instead but then it's the wrong color it's the wrong width it's the wrong size i've just said now that i've been ranting for about half an hour and i really did not mean for this to be that long if time just flew by but i really wanted to explain it in more detail i know it's not gonna quell the questions i know a lot of people want me to make things without mods and honestly that's completely understandable i really do get it but please understand that these are the reasons why I just don't bother anymore. It's not just about the complexity alone. It's not the fact that I use parts that give me, you know, a bit of an edge. If anything, the addition to more parts means more combinations, more opportunities, and a lot of people find that very overwhelming. There are a lot of people who download Dark Injections and they just cannot handle it because there's so many more options. But what you'll notice is that a lot of the options are just very strange parts. I think the only parts I've ever used that surely is a shortcut that just gives you, you know, the thing easily and quickly right there and then is the dancer heads. And as you see, I don't even have the dancer heads mod installed. As great as a mod it is, I personally find it too cheaty, ironically. Whenever I use things using Dark Injections parts, you'll notice that I tend to use them like in very different ways. What I really love about Dark Injections is that the parts that it offers are very ambiguous. They're very bizarre and it allows you to use them in very strange and creative ways. None of them are necessarily a shortcut to getting the right thing. They all just kind of offer different alternatives and typically with better textures. It's not necessarily that the parts are a new shape, it's what that new shape offers to the table, it's potential it gives. Now, I didn't realise I've been ranting for 30 minutes already and that <laughs> just flew by, I do apologise for that. But as you can tell, there truly is a lot more to the argument than quite simply more parts, low complexity. There's so much more to it and I personally find that Modest Spore just gives me more opportunity. It's not so much just about the complexity, it's the way the individual parts texture. It's how I can utilise different parts into different combinations and different effects. It's the way I can use a colour sphere mod and create a nice, shiny, clean and polished texture as opposed to using a nail down and having it look all lumpy and the wrong shade entirely. Using modded parts, I can make creations look very smooth, very polished and therefore better reflect the original content that are after. This translates really well into Pokemon creations for example. Pokemons are very smooth, cartoony creations and as people have been doing incredible jobs recreating them in Spore, they always just have that very round basic appearance and that is no fault to the creators, it is a fault to the, edit to the editor itself. Whenever I make them in modded Spore, they might not be the most accurate but they tend to be a bit more accurate than the vanilla versions. And at the end of the day, I've built my channel around making these really big, cool and badass creations Believe me, I can't make big in vanilla. It just does not work. The editor just doesn't allow me to. It's too small. And I've also built a channel around making fan art. And when a person sees their favorite video game character that doesn't look anything like it in Spore, believe me, they do get aggressive. I don't make modded creations because I'm worried about people getting aggressive. That's just, that's just part of the internet. I don't really care about that. But if I have a method to make things more accurate, I'd be mad not to take it. It's a wasted opportunity and I think it's just silly not doing it for the sake of. There is one final argument that can be made is that by making modern creations I cannot share them for X and Y reason. Whereas vanilla creations can be shared. And while that is very true, believe me when I say that when I make a vanilla creation, 
you're not getting a Dark Edge creation, you're getting a Spore creation. What you'll be getting is something very limited and just overall quite disappointing and quite lackluster, at least in terms of my creations. Throughout the years, I've made hundreds upon hundreds of vanilla creations, and even to this day, 11 years later, there's still so many things I just simply do not know or cannot do in Vanilla Spore. It doesn't matter how much experience I have or how creative I can be in certain respects, at the end of the day, the editor is just too limited and I find it far too crutching. I do try every now and then, such as a very recent creation here, but even then you'll see the, the proportions are just very strange and very off. The feet are too large, the textures are rather inconsistent, overall it, it once again could be better, but unfortunately it can't be because it's Vanilla Spore. Right, I'll wrap it up here then. I do hope it's given you guys some insight. If you have any questions or even any contesting arguments, I really would be interested in hearing it. And if there's anything that you don't understand, you may disagree with, or you just want to question about what I've said, please feel free and I'll happily try to answer you as best as I can. But otherwise, I do hope it's offered a lot of insight and I hope it kind of explains how I feel about the editors and why I just prefer making modded. At the end of the day, I want to make the most impressive creation that I can and I just cannot do that without the increased boundaries of the editor, the ability to scale parts larger and smaller than they normally can, and of course, complexity and textures. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a great day.